In this project, I'm expanding a pantry we have. I got some weird kind of shelves, dead space, uh, closet. So I'm going to kind of move the wall back and ex expand it. Knock down a wall, put up new drywall, uh, put down new tile, put shelves, putting the the, uh, the drywall, painting, a little piece of this, this helpful. So I'll, I'll put down in, in the chapters, you can kind of skip to what you need, or you can see the project sometimes it helps just to see beginning to end. You might not be using it just for a pantry. You might need to, you know, build a little area, something like this. So I'm going to kind of step through all those different parts of the, from the demolition all the way to the completion. We're, yeah, this is our limited pantry where it's just, you know, 12 inch shelf. And you got this weird kind of setup here where you can kind of see where there's a, a nook here where you can kind of put the, the, the trash can and other items. I got some shelves here. It seems a little bit like a wasted space. And then around the other side, it's kind of packed with coats. This wall and see if we can push this back essentially into that, whether we want to take up the whole space or not. Uh, get rid of all these shelves because they're kind of weird wasted space and then run this wall to here, you know, up and make this a whole enclosed area. So I rendered it in SketchUp, what it looks like now. Uh, before I did anything, you see those kind of weird shelves. Uh, this is the closet. And then the back, uh, I flip it over there. That's our, our tiny little pantry. And then uh, change it around where you actually push in that wall, get rid of the shelves, and then make the pantry the largest size. So you see the closet's kind of small. It's just going to be enough to hang up. And then inside, we're, we're going to put these, we have, we have 16 inch shelves. This is the one vent. So it should be able to hide or you know, keep it within the, the two by four wall here. And there was one other vent on this side. Got some electrical. This actually looked at before. There was just this open wires back or uh, electrical switch right here to put it put in a light up top. So that's uh, the plan just to start exploring. Surprised I never didn't notice this uh, when I first moved into the house. Looks like there's a electrical wire running from this outlet on the other side. Just loosely here through the wall. And if there's running a loose wire on the drywall, it wasn't the giveaway that a professional didn't do this, then this was the, the final thing that sealed it, this piggybacking on the same screw and an outlet. So first step is going to be looking at this wall here, or trying to, you know, I'm gonna start exploring it a little bit and just seeing, just seeing what's behind it. Uh, so I'm just trying to make it, you know, maybe I want to be able to back out of the project a little bit. Uh, so I just made a straight line so I could just, you know, if there is any problem there, I could just put a drywall piece back up there. But I just cut the tape and then cut a straight line just to kind of explore in there. Uh, use a hammer to then you know, get out what I could just because it's all screwed in here. But I was able to to, to look in as I, you know, slowly do it. And there was no pipes or anything in the way like I kind of expected. No, no wires, anything. So I was good to just start tearing it down. And it had some like, interesting discoveries. You can see this one normal two by four, it looks like, an inch and a half. You can tell this is really old because it's a almost two inch, uh, a real two by four. It's actually two inches down here where it's, you can't even see it. You can see it's uh, the saw marks in it. This is like a legit uh, two by four. And I had you know, some concern just to make sure that what this wasn't a load bearing wall, but I could see gaps uh, in here between the studs and the, the header. Uh, you can see there's just little pieces here, so I was pretty confident that this, this was not a load-bearing wall. You know, there's just a lot of this blocking, things like that. So I moved by, moved on just to kind of the outside, see what I had to do. So I had to start pulling off the trim in this little shelf nook area because I'm extending that wall across here, and that's going to be part of the pantry. And then I put some blue tape down and then just kind of laid out, made sure it's square, uh, made sure it's parallel to the other side of the wall and you don't have a weird parallelogram, but I'm just going to you know, lay out where I need to cut the tile because I'm actually going to have to cut that tile and then that the, the new wall is going to extend uh, and become a, a new corner right there. So just laying that out. And I started working on just more demolition, just getting rid of these shelves, everything, so I can make it a little easier to pull out uh, the drywall in there. Uh, just pulling out. You can tell these are old looking shelves the way they used to hand build them without any brackets, just pieces of wood in there holding the shelves up. And then, of course, my daughter wanted to get in on the action here. And I'm sure she enjoyed this. What, what kid wouldn't want to just destroy a wall, you know, to start get, getting big tools in there, pry bars, pulling it out, destroying the wall. So she had fun. And then you kind of look at it like this old, sorry, I started pulling off the corner more around or, you can see like this on the left, that's the much older versus even slightly a little bit newer, maybe like the 80s or so. 
Uh, but it's definitely making a mess here. And you can see this, and if you can see there's little particles floating everywhere. So it's trying to keep it down as much as you can, but it just makes a huge mess. But I'm slowly starting to be able to see kind of an idea looking through there. And that, that venting looks like it's t tucked into the wall, so that's good. Uh, but this is, you can see how tiny this this uh, pantry was. It was only 18 inches and I think like 30 inches or so. Uh, so it's definitely going to be a huge improvement on the size and what it was store in there. And I did my best impersonation of Jack Nicholson. And like here's Johnny coming through from the other side of the closet back into the uh, what used to be the pantry there. And I'm just pulling out that last wall. Uh, then I get the saws all out and just start taking out the two by fours. And, you know, the, the, the saw would, what blade wasn't pinching at all, so it just definitely was not a load-bearing wall. Uh, just so, just loosen them up, kind of cut them out as best I could. There were so many nails in these things, uh, but just pulling it out and, you know, slowly doing the, the last bit of demolition here. And I finally got all the interior out, and I can see what a, what a huge space this is. And they've got a huge mess to clean up, too, so I try to vacuum up as much as I could. I'm going to be start having to pull out some of these tiles and the flooring just to kind of have an even area for the wood on one side and the, the tile on the new side. And then I started cutting the tile and you can see smoke going everywhere for the dust. I was like, hey, I should probably use this vacuum that I have right here. Uh, but so I put, I have a diamond blade bit on there. Uh, battery halfway fell out there. But I'm, I was able to eventually do it just cut like I have never had cut tile hand cut tile like this before uh, but it actually worked out pretty easy it wasn't too bad uh, and then I'm just slowly pulling it up I was just still worried about cracking any of the existing tile so I was just slowly working each piece out uh, I mean I know I had cut the tile but I was just again just overly paranoid because I didn't have any extra of this tile so I didn't want to break it into the, the what I'm keeping in the the kitchen but it doesn't have to be perfect here because the wall is going to be up there and then it's going to be covered by the, the baseboard molding on the bottom. But again, just it actually came out pretty easy. I'm not sure if it wasn't uh, the down as well, but it did. Like I said, it was pretty easy. And once I got the tape off, it was a nice clean cut there. So I'm ready to, once I pull out that flooring, uh, that, that other, the thin set with the cement board, then I'll have enough where I can start building the wall. And so I pulled that out, and you can see those that's old old school slats uh, subfloor. So I'm measuring now for the two by fours or for the walls, you know, how high I need it to be. I cut the header and the footer just and then lay it there because you got to remember what you're cutting the studs has to be, you know, the, the header and the footer is on either side of it. So that's going to be in between. So I test it out. I'm like, yep, this is the right distance. And then one thing I just make sure is that the, the wall is going to extend to here. But if I did that, I'd be missing. I need some be able I have some place to screw the drywall from the inside. So I want to add it, make sure I add another two by four right here in the corner, just so I have something again to attach the drywall. And then just measuring it out and cutting the rest of the, the studs for the wall outside. I should have gone and got my miter saw, but I had the uh, track saw that was the easiest I had right now. Should have probably set it to the right distance so I could actually cut all the way through. I uh, get a little bit of kickback here, but it's that overall safe. <laughs> Um, and then that, the one side of the wall, I, luckily it was only an inch and a half that I needed to build that out just to, to accept that other corner. And so I could just put one, two by four. The one I had was a little bit bent. So I had a clamp there and just kind of holding it straight while I nailed it in with the, uh, framing nailer. Uh, but that, that, this part was pretty easy. Don't get a chance to use a framing nailer very much. So I'm sure I could have nailed or screwed this in, but it's much more fun with a framing nailer. And then just mark out where you know, on the header and the footer where you're gonna to put these two by fours. Like I said, it was it was small enough that I really only needed two, but I wanted to put that one extra one real close there, just so that I'd have it on the corner. Again for the for the drywall, uh, but it actually adds a little bit more strength. There's not gonna be much there because it's it's eight foot wall, but it's you know it's pretty small. I think it was like 14 inches or so. Uh, but just you know, get all the studs in there and get it squared up enough. Uh, outside and when I put it in there that I could I can make sure I you know I don't have to do a lot of work so I was just making sure it was it was level the, the existing wall was level which was good and so I could just make sure that the, my my little wall extension I was putting in there was level uh, both sides make sure it's not uh, skewed to either side and then I had to toenail it in because I'm on the long side but it's it's fine that's gonna be covered with all with drywall there uh, and then you know nail it to the existing there and it's pretty strong it's obviously doesn't need that much just needs to hold a little bit of drywall 
and then you can see where that that extra stud is how it's going to be able to hold the drywall on the corner because i have the one existing or near the the, the ac venting there that'll hold uh, drywall for that wall but this one needs a little bit extra just so you can support it everywhere make life easier and then i put in a uh, wire or an outlet at the bottom it's kind of a mess i need to work on here looks like somebody had some fun and continuously you know, running other tails off this it wasn't supported anywhere so some work to do uh, it's going upstairs but like I, said, I needed it just because i'm going to be putting our rechargeable uh, vacuum in there in the pantry and then so i just start cutting out the drywall it's pretty easy measure you know how big you want it score it i think i had a little bit of a dull knife here so i'm having to push kind of hard normally you don't have to score very hard uh, but get the longest level you can just it makes it easier just so you can see any mistakes like i made here uh, i think both my edges were okay but i'm, I'm lining it up and that the previous line is not going square along my level so i'm like what is going on here uh let me measure it yep i wrote it wrong so that one each side was okay let me remark it it's drywall, so it doesn't really matter, especially when it's going into corners, it's going to be cut off, but just makes life a little bit easier if you're not yeah, completely off by half an inch by the time you get to the end. So you just score it, break it in half, and then put it up here. All this, the tape, the corners will be covered by uh, the metal corner, and then the tape uh, will cover any seams, so you don't have to be perfect. And you don't want to try to be too close, or you just spend a lot of time. Uh, you know, trying to fit it in there. So here I'm, I'm putting in the uh, the corner bead just to protect the the corners with the with the metal, so because the drywall would crack if you know as it get knocked into. So this is a pretty easy wall to put extension here. Uh, I got my helper out here helping me uh, record as I do you know, some of the electrical for the light, and then she got all like, distracted and started staring at her feet for a while. I'm not really sure why this was in here, uh, but she missed all that running from so i ran the light because i'm going to have a light in there that wasn't one so i'm running it down to a switch so i'm going to put a switch for the light and then there's going to be an outlet in there just for that's the basic needs of that area and i know i'm uh, having a good project when i have almost all my power tools all in one place here uh but <laughs> it's making a mess but it's, it's, it's coming along pretty good so i got the outlet wired up i still need to secure some of those wires some of them i've done a little bit others are just kind of loose there still um so it's it's going pretty well so far. I'm pretty happy that floor needs to come up a little bit because I'm extending uh, the again the pantry into that side. But everything seems like no big surprises, which was uh, pretty shocking. So it's just drywall. Uh, the ceiling is is next. I like to put that up just so it has a little bit of support from the walls. The walls will actually be holding it. It doesn't really need it obviously because it's it's screwed in, but just a little extra nice to have. So it's it's a little tough putting ceiling in there because you're you're trying to hold it with one hand and then you you see if it flexes too much uh, it could it could snap off so you have to get just enough to be holding it up there and get enough screws in there once you get like two or three screws in there it holds up pretty well and you don't have to uh, worry about it cracking or breaking so next thing i'm just going in that corner and if you see my knee is on a pry bar i like to do that just to have the drywall off lean at least a quarter inch you can do half inch whatever you want just enough where it's not wicking up any moisture from the ground there shouldn't be any any uh, moisture but in case any spills or you know whatever it's just easier it's also easier to kind of maneuver it into place and so i like to just get a couple screws in there once i've used that got it off the floor and then after again you get a couple to support it uh, you can then finish it off so if you see here how it's kind of moving up and down i'm doing the same thing where i've got a but this time i'm stepping on the pry bar but i'm, I'm using it to kind of position that especially when you have uh, obstructions like this like this uh, switch box i need to kind of hold it off the ground but also kind of be able to have enough room to maneuver it around so i got that up again same thing secure it with a couple screws and then once you do it's 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 held up there it's not that heavy that you can just then let go of the pry bar or anything and just then get all enough screws in there to secure it in place so it's not bowed and so next uh, thing i need to work on was get rid of that uh the subfloor here so i just use, again used a track saw i didn't want to cut all the way through plus 
because I was worried about hitting nails with it, you know, lose my expensive blade. So I cut most of the way through uh, just because I had this one panel here and then go back with the oscillating saw and just finish it off. And I'm taking this out because I have kind of an L-shaped thing uh, kind of where, where I'm knee or I'm, I'm kneeling. And I wanted to have you know, as large of a piece of subfloor in there so there's no flex on the, the new tile that's going to, I'm going to put in there instead of having a bunch of seams. So you see, so I'm just pulling it out just enough so where, that's where the wall is going to go and sit on that existing subfloor. Uh, there and then I noticed there's some, some nails in here and it's the old school nails if you've never seen them before like what they used to be uh, there's kind of like almost like a triangle wedge shaped those were actually holding those slatted boards down so that's a really old nail right there so the people that put in the wood floor just kind of bent them over uh, but it's going to be kind of in a way for me so it, I figured it was easier just to get the grinder out and just cut them off than trying to pull them out and you know, make a big uh, mess here so I ran into a little bit of issue here, uh, which I kind of had an idea I was already going to. Uh, but the problem is this space is so small. Um, I'm trying to put the wall in there and because of the width and the size of it needs to be you know, top, see up to the ceiling. It just, it, there's no way to get it in here and maneuver it already built. I was trying to think about like getting it half here and built. Uh, just, just no good way. So I ended up building it and then cutting it off. Uh, and the studs here, and then the other, and then I, I have these little pieces here, so then I get the top half, I can get that in there, maneuver it, put it up here, uh, and screw it together, nail it together. Not the best, but it's just interior wall. It's, it's not supporting any weight or anything, uh, and it's actually going to hit the hit the uh, walls on both sides, the floor, and the rafters above. So I have, and then drywall on both sides, so I have no problem. Uh, right, but just a, another little challenge. I'm actually going to have to preload uh, the drywall in here before I put the wall up, because I definitely know I can't get that in there and move move it around. So I got the wall in here now after cutting it, and I just want to make it make sure it's level, straight, so that when I when I put it up, because I'm having to put two different pieces. So as I mentioned, it's kind of screw it to the wall, so it could be really strong here. It doesn't need to be. It's going to be supporting some of the you know the shelves, but it's plenty. Uh, so I got the drywall in, and then I'm just going to screw it in this bottom part of it, just to kind of give it a little bit of support. So while I'm trying to nail the other side, or screw the other side to the the wall, I uh, just. I don't want it all bending here. So just I said enough to get to drywall on there to make it uh, strong enough. Then I got the other half. This is the other half of the drywall that's going to go up in the top. So because I had if I had the two pieces, I couldn't screw one in and have the other one. Uh, it was just kind of a, a a bit of a Jenga game here. Uh, but so I get this part in here and then put the rest of the wall up. I uh, see. So see if I did had that, I obviously wouldn't be able to fit the other piece in there. But I get it just enough and then get it. Make sure it's flat. Uh, with the existing the bottom one and it's level it helps to have this six foot level so i can make a long you know make sure i have a long straight piece going up there uh, i want to make it straight this way as well uh, so again just keeping the level flat against both the, as i screw it back that that blocking back in there i put more screws in there but it's just holding it in place while i'm working on all of them and i cut them all at different uh, levels on purpose just so that it wasn't one kind of hinged area that, that they're, they're hinging in multiple uh, different parts there so as I mentioned screws up into the ceiling so once with the blocking and the, you see that uh, screwing into the wall screwing into the floor this this thing was really strong especially when I put the drywall on so I'm putting it in on the other side uh, finding that top piece now that I have the, all the wall together and if you notice the edges on the right are, are aren't hitting anything it's because I have one more stud that needs to go in um, I found it was thought it was gonna be easier just to get that uh, the drywall up so you can see I've got that stud now in there so that they those pieces are now hitting the the edges sitting on there so there's something to screw into and I I lined it this way like I, was, I went through a lot of iterations trying to figure out the best way to put the drywall this found was the easiest so the only seam I would have would be right down the middle there. Uh, where I have the the beveled drywall, and so that's easy to mud. And then the other seam that's going to be kind of a hard, where there's two blunt edges going together on the right there, it's only like four inches. And so once I do the corner, because I have to tape up the corner and kind of you know mud the corner and blend it in uh, with the wall, it'll actually just go over that, especially when I get to you know eight, 12 inch blades, it'll be way over that, that four inches, so I can kind of hide them both at the same time. So I'm just putting the screws in here, and making sure it's all secure. So you can see that I have that other little four inch piece on the right there that'll be covered over uh, easier because it's really hard to do, do blunt or two, two butt joints there. So here's where it's tapered the drywall that I have it sideways there. 
uh, and, and I mentioned. As I'm showing with my hands, I, it'll taper over this way. Uh, I got some corner bead on that little interior corner. Uh, there was a weird shallow wall there, so I had to do this thing, but it's fine. It's all you know behind the wall there. Uh, so I got everything out now, or I got all the drywall done, and so here I'm going to put uh, get put some new subfloor in here. And this is what I was saying. I'd like to have the largest piece instead. Of, it would have been like three or four different seams there, and maybe drywall or the tiles could crack if you step on them. But so just making the you know the largest piece. So I had some of this five eighths inch uh, subfloor just from from a building I built on the outside of my house. So I just used that. It's been sitting out there for a couple of years. So I made it almost all to the end, and then it pinched my blade. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my saw. Like oh it pops out. Oh, okay, it was pinched in there. So but it wasn't too bad. Just cut this little cutting out the rest of this little L shape here piece for this subfloor. That's that's going to go in there. It. Most of this is not going to be walked on, but you know, just make it as, as strong and least flexible as possible. So, so you can see how it, it fits in there. Now I'm going to have just only that seam between the existing subfloor. And I'm still going to be putting cement board on top of that and transitioning. Because, uh, again, this is going to be all tiled in there. So it's pretty easy once you get the subfloor in there. Just put a lot of screws so it doesn't bend at all. And I have that diagonal slatted floor underneath it. So there, there was plenty of places to, to screw into. I didn't have to just hit studs. And then it was on to drywall. This is actually my first time I've actually mixed uh, drywall mud. I usually just buy the pre-made stuff, but I figured I was using a lot this time. So I tried to, you know, I, I, I want to work on it. Uh, and also I didn't want to have to wait a whole day like you normally do. So I got this 45 minute compound. Uh, so it's good for 45 minutes before it starts hardening up. And so you don't have to wait overnight or, you know, 24 hours. So just starting off with the, usually the six inch blade here. And if you haven't done this before, this is how you have to tape up joints. Uh, you gotta. You want to put a thin coat, and then you're gonna put a tape across there. You want any joints to be taped so that as they expand or the building, you know, moves a little bit, it doesn't crack the drywall. This the tape kind of holds that. So you put a thin layer down, put the tape down, press it into the the drywall. It doesn't have to be really hard. You just want to kind of be almost acting like a glue on both sides of it, and then you want to put a thin coat on top of it. Uh, you don't want to try to fill in everything at once. So you're gonna do at least three. Uh, runs at, the, at, at doing the, the mud. So each successive layer should be a little bit thinner you know, a little bit cleaner, less to, to, to sand. Uh, the, the better you can do it, the, the, the smoother you can do it, the less sanding you have to do and less mess. Uh, so here's a corner. I'm using a corner tool here just to do the, the corners. I used to not like these, but I got this much bigger one. I think it's like five inches and made it life a lot easier because it's really hard, especially if you're trying to do both corners without hitting the, the corner that you just did. Uh, with your with your knife but it only works on the first layer here so here's a i didn't mix up enough drywall just uh, uh the, the compound mud because i wasn't sure how much to use but i got enough but just give you kind of an idea how much you have to do uh if you, when you're drywalling especially when you got a lot of seams like this where you're remodeling so there's corners and when those the place where all three of the corners come together is the the biggest pain because you're trying not to you know, ruin the existing one and then just taping around that corner. And of course, the, the helper wants to get in involved. Well, it looks like fun here with the putty. So she's just playing around with it, you know, helping a little bit. But so you want to fill this this in uh, enough. And then you run uh, the, the blade parallel to the wall uh, using that, that edge, the corner, and kind of bring that up. And that's going to level it out kind of like, like I'm doing uh, here. Uh, but I'm just filling in the, the corners, and you can see that's that second piece of tape that I, that I was putting in the joint and how close it is uh, there, but it's going to be covered over. So I did all that, and then you know, let, let it dry, and then I came back. Yeah, there's a couple areas I was a little bit rough, and it's easier than trying to sand it all down. I just like sometimes using the, the knife and just kind of coming from each side and making that squaring off that corner. Because sometimes you can sand a little bit too hard when you're when you're trying, like I said, with a sander and, and grind into the corner. And so I have the sander here with it's got a mesh sanding and then a vacuum on the other end so that it's turned on so that it can get all this sand that you're uh, making because this makes a huge mess and that stuff gets really small just kind of floats everywhere and you want to go as soft as enough just enough to get to uh, sand it down without like, tearing up the paper without sanding too hard there's i made a little bit of a mistake here well not mistake it's just air bubble in there so if you only did it one time you that's something you know a, a visible defect here 
here's a place where I didn't do very good. I don't know why I cut it in so hard. So you can see I'm having to go over this quite a bit here and just sand that down because it's almost a ledge. And you can see where I pressed too hard. That's what you want to avoid. And you end up with these uh, score lines from the sandpaper. Uh, they can also be affected by your vacuum cleaner. If you if it's adjustable, it's nice. You can turn it down just enough where it's it's sucking up the drywall dust or the, without actually pulling the, the uh, sander to the, the wall and you know, scraping too hard. So here's the, the corner bead, just kind of lightly go on that, get it enough so it's down to the, the metal there. So it's a nice smooth transition. Because what you're trying to do is transition the, the mud into that, that edge on both sides. And just kind of give you an idea here where it's covered. You can see where a four inch blade would go, you know, give you, it's going to be built up a little bit more in the corners and it's going to fade that way and give you that smooth. And by the, by the time you get to the 12 inch, you can see how, how much farther uh, And there's a mistake I did. Uh, that's what we, we want to avoid is sanding the paper off like that. Uh, so when you're sanding the the, put, the 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 edges, just avoid trying to hit the paper too much. So here I've moved over to the eight inch blade. You can see if I actually already covered uh, those those two pieces that that corner and that joint uh, that that I made. Because uh, both of them have I was using when I was using the, the six inch, it was enough, and then this one's gonna. Uh, cover up both of them and again when I, by the time I do that 12 inch it'll it'll be completely hidden under there so that was an easy joint to cover so just kind of fill it in you're not trying to do a thick layer just enough where you can make a nice smooth transition using that that whatever th the thickness width of your blade is and here's just kind of an example showing you how much so I just a couple small mistakes still trying to to to, to uh, fix that one didn't not too great right there. A little bit of a divot, uh, but at this point, I'm still you know, working on getting the fade in there. And here's just some example of some paper or the drywall that I used at the sander. So I, I actually like to move to the 220, the much finer as I sand on the second coat and on, on the final coat a little bit. I should use a block, uh, but here's I've, I've adjusted the, the sander down, or the, sorry, the, the vacuum down to the lowest setting so it's not sucking the, the the sander into the wall and you know pushing it too hard so I, I can give a real light sanding and I can fade that drywall into the the, the paper as with a smooth transition so you want to make long strokes as best you can you don't want to do work in just a little area and make some divots that are then visible when the when you paint it so this is the uh, I've done two coats two sandings and I'm going to move on to the 12 inch Actually, since I'm mixing my own, I actually made it a little bit thinner than the previous coach just because I wanted to be able to fill in those, those small divots, uh, make it a lot smoother and a little bit easier to, to work with, especially because I'm not going to be using very thick coats. I just want a little thin layer just to, to add that a more of a, a, a longer transition so it's, so it's not visible, and then also just fill in any of those imperfections that I had on, on the previous coats. So it's it maybe hard to tell, but I'm pushing a little bit harder this time because I'm not actually leaving. I don't want a big, thick layer. I just want just enough, like I said, just to make a, a smooth transition across all those those previous layers. They, they were sanded down, but I just want to make enough. So I just kind of lay on it just enough and then go over and do a long, nice stroke across it. Make it nice and smooth so that you don't have much to sand. And you don't want to make a perfect line. So here's a kind of the, the, the 12 inch full. So it, you'll see a little bit of imperfections in there, but it's, it's easy to sand those down. Uh, down towards the, the uh, switch, that's not very good. I had to, to work on that a little bit more. But you'll 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 start seeing as I uh, as, as you work in here, each layer just becomes further, uh, and there's just hopefully a little bit less sanding to do. Uh, but that this transition is a lot. You can see almost how much drywall putty I had to put up there because it's almost you hardly see any drywall at some points just because I'm trying to fade it as best you can so you don't have these little ramps on either side of it that are visible. So for the last sanding I usually like to do almost all sanding block uh, and I'm fine I just like it it's just I think I feel like I can get a little bit better smoother sanding uh, just them working with that the sanding block, especially with the vacuum, and you're kind of having to push hard and on the wall, I just end up with a little bit more scratches. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I like to again just try to work on the fade. So you're trying to fade it out. You're not trying to make 
exact straight lines. You want, it's okay if it's a little bit wavy, the line. You can see it's not, I don't have a straight up and down, and that's good. So that you don't want it to be visible if you had a very clear delineation of a line of where it's transitioning. But you can see these, these lines from either side are almost meeting together, and there's hardly any just flat uh, drywall anymore just because it's trying to fade it out as much. So I'm going to end the... Uh, video here. You can see what a big mess it was and why I wanted to wait to put the tile down. So I'll just, on the next, I'll, I'll do a second part here where I, where I finish off with the tile, the painting, and then actually start putting it in all the shelves and everything. But this is a, a good place to, to stop.